Hello friends, welcome back. My name's Ramon, how are you today? So today we're doing yet another highly requested Korean sunscreen review. Now I had never heard of these specific sunscreens before, but when I saw them in my comments on repeat, I had to look into them because I was like, why are these being so requested? And so with that, today we're talking about two sunscreens from Isentree, their Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel, as well as their Hyaluronic Acid Perfect Sun Block, both SPF 50 plus, PA plus, 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 Plus. But before we get into it, I'm gonna ask to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and down below in the comments. Tell me, first of all, have you tried these? Which one's your favorite? What are your thoughts? What are your experiences? But also, what other Isentree products are you loving? I've tried a handful of products from Isentree. I've greatly enjoyed them. These were also a very interesting experience. I wanna know, what else are you enjoying from Isentree? Off. I also want to say, if you're watching this in real time, today is March 10th. I did apply to be part of the 2021 Sephora squad. I would greatly appreciate your support in my running to be a part of this. If you are able to and you're down to support, I would greatly appreciate you submitting a testimonial as to why you subscribe to my channel and why you enjoy watching my content, just to kind of help boost my chances maybe. We'll find out. The link for that is going to be down in the description box. I also want to say that these were purchased thanks to contributions and donations to my Patreon. So shout out to my patrons for making this video possible. If you want to be part of my Patreon and help support the content that I make on this channel, you want to see sneak peeks or help give insight as to what I should review on my channel, the link for all that's going to be down in my description box. Again, I pretty much fund all of my sunscreen and most of my skincare reviews on my channel out of my own pocket with my own coin. So any and all donations and support is greatly appreciated in the description box. So these are two sunscreens from Isentree, as I mentioned, and these are part of their Hyaluronic Acid line. And the main marketing behind these specific sunscreens, and I think the line overall, is the fact that they feature eight different types slash molecular weights of hyaluronic acid. But looking a little bit more into the product claims specifically, these advertise that they're gonna give you good sun protection, help balance oil and moisture levels in the skin, help strengthen the skin barrier, and give you some anti-inflammatory soothing benefits. And those are things that I like to see in products and sunscreens especially, and things that I tend to see a lot in sunscreens and Korean beauty products. But with these, you have two options. With the Watery Sun Gel, this is a completely organic, aka chemical sunscreen. And then with the Perfect Sun Block, this is a completely mineral or inorganic sunscreen. They give you two options, kind of for different flavors, depending on what you personally like for yourself and for your daily needs. But that being said, even though they do have different filters, they do have a lot of parallel ingredients in their formulations, kind of going and elaborating on that. They feature niacinamide, centella, adenosine, pycnogenol, olive fruit oil, astaxanthin, and fig fruit, which those specific four give you like good antioxidant benefits. These are all fragrance, essential oil, and denatured alcohol free as well. So I think they're also touting these to be better suited for more sensitive skin types. And they do also have for their marketing for these that these also scored very highly on low skin irritancy tests. How I do my sunscreen reviews on my channel. As with all my sunscreens, I apply a quarter teaspoon to cover my face, my ears, and my neck, work them in for a little bit, and let them sit down for at least five minutes before I go on top of them with makeup. Depending on what kind of sunscreen I'm reviewing, I do different applications. For my chemical sunscreens, I do the application, put makeup on top, and then I also reapply the sunscreen on top of the makeup so you can see how that looks. With my mineral sunscreens, I do sunscreen application and makeup day. And then on the second day, I do just bare face with the mineral sunscreen and then reapply on top so that you can see what the mineral sunscreen looks like just on bare skin as well. So getting into it, we're starting with the Watery Sun Gel. Again, this is the only organic slash chemical filter sunscreen. Talking about the filters behind this, it has octosalate, homosalate, tinosorb S, Tinosorb M, which we'll get into in a second, polysilicone 15, and Uvinol A+. So that Tinosorb M ingredient, I come back slash make note of that just because Tinosorb M by function, by composite, is a organic slash chemical sunscreen. It has carbon in it, that's the base structure of the sunscreen. That being said, how it functions, the properties behind it, make it more similar to a physical filter. So it's technically in itself sort of a hybrid filter in how it functions. And that's interesting to know just because due to how it functions in a sunscreen, sometimes, especially on deeper skin tones, it can have the potential to leave a white cast. It didn't on me, spoiler alert, but I did also try to look for other resources of individuals applying this who have a much deeper skin tone than I do, and I could not. If I find one by the time this video goes live, that will be in the description box. If you have deeper skin, something to note. Getting into the formulation points, besides the ingredients that I mentioned was parallel between the two different versions of this, the chemical version of this also features Titania Cordata extract as well as Persline extract, which are very, very common in K-beauty and they act as anti-inflammatory ingredients. And that's pretty much it. That's kind of all the extra. But my overall experience with this, this is a very lightweight yet nicely hydrating and moisturizing sunscreen that sits lightweight. Having those extra humectant ingredients up in there are really great to just infuse dehydrated skin like I have with really nice rich 
rich hydration, but because it's such a lightweight gel moisturizer texture, you don't feel it sitting heavily on the skin, which is also great for my oily skin. I really enjoyed the way this looked and felt on the skin. This worked in and disappeared almost instantly. And again, as I mentioned, it left no trace of white cast. It didn't act weird up in my facial hair or hairline. So overall, the initial application was very positive. Because it really infuses your skin with a lot of hydration and leaves you nicely moisturized, it gives you a nice canvas for makeup, had no issues buffing or applying anything. And because it is so lightweight, it also reapplied beautifully on top of makeup, no issue. I did find the reapplication left a little bit of a radiant finish, but blotting or setting again afterwards, you'll be golden. So I definitely did enjoy the watery sun gel. I find the texture of this lends itself more towards right now in London, where it's a little bit more dry, a little bit more winter still. So I'd be interested to play with this a little bit more in the summer and see how this wears and how it looks with a different climate. So next let's go on to the Perfect Sun Black. And this is again, their mineral only option. I don't know which one of these I had the most requests for, but I would probably argue that it was definitely this one that a lot of people had a lot of interest in just because probably wondering, is this brown skin friendly? But looking at the filters, this features titanium dioxide, period. That's it, that's the only filter, which raises a lot of questions just because again, this is an SPF 50 plus, PA four pluses. I don't know where they're getting those numbers from or what's going on there because titanium dioxide does not have that level of absorbency across that broad of the UV spectrum. Titanium dioxide primarily gets into the UVA two range, but it doesn't really cover the UVA one range very adequately. So big question mark on that. I do not consider titanium dioxide an adequate broad spectrum filter. And that's not just me saying that. I'll have a graph up here showcasing the UV absorbency of titanium dioxide compared to other filters filters and it falls a little bit short. That's why zinc right now is a bigger player for more broad spectrum protection. That's why you see mostly only zinc formulations or zinc and titanium dioxide combination filters together, just because titanium dioxide can't do all that by itself, even with whatever UV boosters are up in a sunscreen, so. But aside from that, the other formulation point in the sunscreen, again, aside from the ones that are more parallel in between both of these, is that this is a little bit more simple of a formulation. Besides what I mentioned in the intro, this pretty much just has lactobacillus ferment, which they're intending to have more soothing and some skin strengthening benefits to it, and that's pretty much it. So my experience with this, the texture of this is actually very elegant. It's a nice lightweight gel, but as you can see on screen, I do a half face application and you can see this on my skin. This does have a little bit of a tone up slash white cast effect, even on me. And I was like, okay, I apply a full face, let that all sit down. I go on top with makeup and I find this actually preps the skin very nicely for makeup. I didn't do an end of day check-in, but this left my skin like nice. Eight plus hours at the end of the day, I found that my face, I wasn't like matte matte. I had a little bit of radiance in my face, but I wasn't like oil slick on either side of my nose and I also find that this did not cause my makeup to break up in any weird spots like I normally find with mineral sunscreens so that's a nice positive the texture and elegance of this has it so that it sits nice and lightweight on the skin I barely feel it's there if you have more dry areas this does tend to catch and I have that little bit here in the center of my forehead but I find that when I worked it in that rubbed out really nicely and I didn't find that it collected or caused any weird patchiness around my eyes but let's talk about the bare face day because that was a weird day for the reapplication a couple hours later I worked it in I don't know if it was just me looking in the mirror or what if you can see it on footage too i find that either it didn't have any more of a white cast with the application what i thought happened was that it kind of diminished whatever white cast was initially there in the first place with the first layer weird experience with that i don't know you tell me what you see on screen but the reapplication wasn't horrible it didn't feel extremely heavy and i don't feel like it really exacerbated any white cast necessarily on my skin hairline and facial hair is a different story i did find this did catch this was very noticeable in those areas that collect in my eyebrows and my mustache that's very common for titanium dioxide based sunscreens. Overall, this did sit nice on oily skin. If you have more dry skin, you'll have to prep your skin a little bit better just to make sure it's really good. Just because I don't know what it is about this. It just left me a little bit more matte, which I like. But if you have dry skin, I know that's not necessarily something you like as well. But high key, if I could compare this to anything, this gives me Pareto Comfy Water vibes. The texture, the feel, the wear, the look on the skin. This gave me a lot of the same attributes I had when I reviewed Pareto Comfy Water. I know because of what's going on right now, that's not available slash people are looking for alternatives. If you're looking for a Pareto Comfy Water dupe, check out the Perfect Sun Block from Isentry because same tease, allegedly the same level of protection that Pareto is supposed to advertise and supposed to have, but they don't. But again, I'm questioning this for this just because of what I mentioned earlier. So my final thoughts on the Isentry Hyaluronic Acid Based Sunscreens. Hi, Keith, these are really cute. I really do enjoy Isentry's formulations. Looking at what products I've used and looking at these, it's interesting seeing what ingredients they use, what they feature, how they formulate products, the textures behind everything, the sensory behind everything. It's very, very nice. It 
overall feels really good to you, then you get a lot of good benefits out of them. So I'm really excited to try more products from the brands. Obviously, the Perfect Sun Block has a little bit more to be desired and a lot of question marks around this. Is it brown skin friendly? In my mind, no. But if you don't mind a white cast or you have fair skin or you're looking for a pretty comfy water dupe and that works for you, this could be a contender for you to check out. I question the protection, as I mentioned, but. But the Watery Sun Gel, low key a banger. Definitely gonna keep playing around with this, especially as the seasons change. But this gave me everything I want in a sunscreen, having oily dehydrated skin, prep my skin nicely for makeup, reapplied beautifully as well. My main qualm with both of these is that the prices on these vary substantially. And in my head, based off what I've seen them as, they're not the most affordable. Depending on where you get these from, the prices vary even just between the two of them. The Perfect Sun Block, the mineral version, is generally more expensive than the chemical one. If you get them on sale, they're about $15. But if not, they range up into the low to mid 20s, 450 mil for both of them. So if it's worth it for you and you want to try them out, I definitely do recommend, especially the Watery Sun Gel. But again, that's your prerogative. So Ramon recommended for the chemical one, 100% yes. For the mineral one, I'm gonna give it like a C plus. But with that, that is my review of the Isn't Tree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel and Perfect Sun Block. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and down below in the comments. Tell me, have you tried these? What your experiences with them were? Which ones do you love the most? And also, what other Isn't Tree products are you loving that I should try out? Because I'm definitely keeping my eyes peeled out for what products to review next. Also, make sure you check the description box for the link to that Sephora squad testimonial. I'd really appreciate your guys' support in that. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye.